when you say underground, do you mean like they're using the dark web, like Tor, or are they literally underground, like little moles? <laughs> Smashing Security, Episode 335, AI Chad Wars and Hacker Passwords Exposed, with Carol Terrio and Graham Cluley. Hello, hello, and welcome to Smashing Security, episode 335. My name's Graham Cluley. And I'm Carol Terrio. You enjoying your August? August? August is great. My laptop is back from the Apple Store and uh, is repaired. That's terrific. I didn't have any EV trauma. Thank you, by the way, to everyone who uh, was very sympathetic regarding my electric vehicle charging issues. (laughs) All right, let's get the show on the road, shall we? All right. But first, before we kick off, let's thank this week's wonderful sponsors, Collide, Sysdig, and Beyond Identity. It's their support that helps us give you this show for free. Now, coming up on today's show, Graham, what do you got? I've got hackers exposing themselves. (laughs) Okay, I don't know if I want to be here for that. Um... And uh, my story is about duping an AI chatbot for society's sake. All this and much more coming up on this episode of Smashing Security. Now, chum chum, I've got some bad news, I'm afraid. Uh, Bad news to share with you, bad news to share with our listeners as well. And the bad news is that hackers are getting hacked (laughs) once again. Okay, uh, I'm not sure a lot yeah. of listeners, especially those that have been hacked, are going to feel very bad about that. You're probably right. It's probably mostly bad news for the hackers themselves, isn't it? I guess the rest of us can feel some sort of sense of schadenfreude at their misery. But some research has come out. Hudson Rock. Have you heard of Hudson Rock? No. Not to be confused with Rock Hudson. Right. <laughs> or Hudson Hawk, the Bruce Willis flop. Hudson Rock is the very peculiarly named, (laughs) I don't know why they called themselves Hudson Rock. Hudson Rock is an Israeli cyber intelligence firm. Well, probably just to appeal to people in the States, UK, etc. But don't you think they have really bad search engine optimization, calling themselves Hudson Rock for all those websites which are devoted to screen heartthrob Rock Hudson? I'm not sure there's that much. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, anyway, Hudson Rock, they took a bit of a trawl through some underground cybercrime forums. In fact, 100 different underground cybercrime forums. And what they were doing was they were looking for stashes. They were looking for a haul of login credentials. They thought, oh, well, let's see what the cyber criminals are up to and let's let's take a little peek at what they're gathering. When you say underground, do you mean like they're using the dark web, like Tor, or are they literally underground, like little moles? <laughs> well, that's... I don't know if the servers are physically located underground, possibly in the Oxford Westgate car park where there's not much of a data signal. I don't, I don't know that that's the case. But yes, it, it could it could be on the dark web or it could simply be cybercrime forums which are being used by the criminal underground, the bad guys. And what Hudson Rock were after, well, they were interested in sifting through to find details of usernames and passwords that had been stolen by a type of malware called an info stealer, information stealing malware that Mm -hmm. scoops up the passwords that you may have stored in your browser, for instance. So some people like to use their browser and get their browser to answer, you know, fill in all the fields with with their passwords or autofill things, all that kind of information. So information stealers, they will grab that kind of information. So Hudson Rock, Israeli cyber intelligence firm, is looking for the stolen login username and passwords. Yes. Okay. Because they're gathering intelligence on what the criminals have got. And they're thinking, well, let's, let's, let's take a look at what they've got. And what was interesting is that they discovered evidence of 120,000 infected computers that contained the login passwords, not for Amazon and Google and all of those sort of sites, but contained the login passwords for cyber criminal forums. So... There are lots of passwords out there 
which have been grabbed by information stealers, which allow you to log into these underground websites. Hmm. And they say that 100,000 of these compromised computers, which they found, which contain these login passwords, belong to not your grandmother, your auntie Beryl. Instead, they belong to hackers. Right. So hackers are not kind of breaking into innocent people's computers and storing their login passwords <laughs> there. Instead, when Hudson Rock did its trawl, it found these on computers and assumed like, aha, uh -huh, this is their username and password for underground cybercrime cray cray place. Right. And so right. it seems hackers are hacking hackers and gathering information from hackers. Well they done found. on choosing your title, Graham. I know you want credit Thank you. for it. Okay. They, they, they found more than 140,000 login credentials to various hacking forums had been stolen. And according to Alon Gal, who is the CTO of Hudson Rock, to be honest, I want to hear from the CMO. I want to hear from the marketing guy who came up with their name. But according to the CTO of Hudson Rock, hackers around the world are infecting computers opportunistically. And the way in which they're doing it is they're promoting uh, fake software uh, through YouTube tutorials, directing victims to download infected software. In other words, what's happening is the hackers are promoting phony ways to hack people and to steal passwords. This is one of the most common things for wannabe hackers to download. And so they download these things, they watch these tutorials, they follow the links, and then they end up getting hacked themselves with their password stolen. Does that make sense? Right. So the, they're being lured in because they yeah. want to get in the hacking arena. Yeah. They want to be, yeah, hacking gods. Right. And they're downloading a few tools, as as most of us who use computers do, have mm -hmm. downloaded a tool for something or another. Mm -hmm. Right. And it turns out you can't trust that. Yeah. Nice. Well, you know, a little irony isn't very good sometimes. A good idea. So newbie hackers looking for shortcuts into the criminal industry, if you want right. to call it that, they can well fall flat on their face because they're falling for the very same tricks as the average Joe public and end up with a malware infection that then steals their passwords. And some hackers really goof up. For instance, Hudson Rock, not Rock Hudson, have identified a cyber criminal called La Citrix. I don't know if that is French or not. La Citrix. <laughs> but La Citrix, he, uh, he or she specialises in hacking companies and then selling access to their servers. But it turns out that he has actually managed to infect his own computer and ended up selling the data from his own computer without realising it. This is very confusing. I'm not sure I'm following, but okay, crack on. You're doing great. I'm sure everyone else is paying attention. <laughs> okay, let me, let me try and explain it another way. There's a bad guy. He's called Lassie Trix. He's one of these guys in the cyber criminal forum. He's offering great big databases of stolen usernames and passwords which have been gathered through information stealers from infected computers. And what he doesn't seem to have realised that in his database, he's also included data from his own computer with his own passwords. <laughs> OK, <laughs> note, note to self, always do a search and replace for your own email address and usernames. So he's not only revealed all his passwords for a whole host of different hacking forums. Mm -hmm. He's also revealed the credentials he uses to log into more than 300 or so companies that he has hacked. So his <laughs> ways of getting in. So he's released all of those as well accidentally because they were on his computer. Prob <laughs> probably because he is using Le Browser yep. to store all these passwords and autofill them. Yeah. Oh, dear. You know what? Who said hackers were geniuses? Like, who ever said that? <laughs> Loads of them are going to screw up the same as all of us do. They're going to fall on their face. And there you are. Well, you're right, because it's not only the passwords he's using to log into crime forums and to log into these hacked companies. It's also all his other information he stored in his browser, including his real identity, his postal address, which he's put into his browser. That's not his real name. It's not La Citrix. Well, I don't okay. <laughs> His phone number and all sorts of information which Hudson Rock has now passed on to law enforcement in case they want to have a little word for him. I once knew someone called De Marie, I'm just saying. Yeah, that's that's true. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's not all bad news for hackers, though, because Hudson Rock also analysed the strength 
of the passwords that were being used by these hackers, by these hackers mm -hmm. on these cyber criminal forums. And what they discovered is that, generally speaking, the passwords being used to log into hacking forums. Un, deux, trois, quatre, cinq. <laughs> <laughs> they are stronger, generally, than those to log into government websites. Really, eh? So the hackers are doing some things a bit right. 40% of the passwords used to log into a cybercriminal site called Breach Forums, for instance, have at least 10 characters and contain four different types of character, according to the research done by this Israeli company. It's kind of scary, though, right? This company, this Israeli company, right? What if, so they're saying, wait, we're good guys, we're doing this and we're sharing this research, but, you know, if they're doing it for good, that means bad people can do this for bad, right? Like, they're picking up a lot of information. Oh, absolutely. Well, that's the thing with these forums, with all the data and the public leaks and right. stuff which is out there. And um, you, you can try telling me these Israeli security companies have got no links to the Israeli military, but I think quite a... I wouldn't know, and I don't think you do either. No, 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 I'm just saying quite, sure you don't. quite a lot of... I'm quite, sure you don't know anything I, about I this. I don't know anything about this. Yep. Quite. I don't want to talk about it. Quite. Not the right audience, not the right place, not the right time. Crow, what's your topic for us this week? Well, it's August right now. Mm. And uh, many people during August, uh, you know, either are starting to think about family holidays or have got one planned, right? Mm. Um, especially if they've got kids, because this is when kids are not in school, right? In many countries. Oh, it's hell. So, it's hell. What do you mean it's all hell? No, it's hell because your kids aren't at school. So you have to keep them entertained or do things with and them. Yet you have to keep working, don't you? Yes, right? all, of course. A lot of the time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, so some people might go to a cottage or a resort or a campsite or visit some, you know, extended family. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I was a kid, we used to go sailing. And, I, you know, my dad is not known as a calm and chill person, <laughs> right? So I am not sure how he put up with all five of us on a boat for two weeks. Like, I just have no idea. Man, oh, man. Yeah. Right? It's crazy. Have you ever seen that movie with Billy Zane and Sam Neill and Nicole Kidman, Dead Calm? Where, yes. Where it goes a bit. Goes a bit potty on the boat, doesn't he? That's <laughs> yes. that's what I imagine the Terrio sailing expedition might end up <laughs> no like. No comment, no comment, no comment. Um, but some people like to do other things. Like some people like to work right through August. Mm -hmm. And others like to indulge their personal passions or hobbies. And for very few lucky people, their work is their passion. Right, Clue? Smashing security. We love this gig. We've done the podcast throughout August, even though you've been on a secret mission. Yes. No one's arm was twisted. It's perfect. No, it's fine. Um, well, if a person is into hacking stuff, mm. you know, and finding screw ups mm. and stuff, they have a wonderful place to go in August. Welcome to death. Con 31, Hacking Conference of Las Vegas. Oh, yeah. Have you been to DEF CON? I've been to uh, Black Hat, but I've never been right. to DEF CON. The thing is, is as you can imagine, Las Vegas is hot in August. Oh, yes. Like I looked up today, <laughs> the day of recording, right? And it's expected to be a high of 39. That's 102 Fahrenheit. Right. And on Thursday, the day of the episode release, it's set for 42 or 107.6 Fahrenheit. 42. So don't melt my little hacker friends. Boy, oh boy. So now at this DEF CON 31 conference, which was held this past weekend, uh, no doubt in an air-conditioned venue, mm -hmm. uh, something new happened. A few companies touting powerful language systems, these chat AI bots, allowed their prize ponies to be tested side by side for the first time. Oh, like a like an AI chat off, a chat off, right? <laughs> a chat off, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, with the White House Office of Science and Technology Policy helping to organize this event, many of the big AI boys and girls made it to the table. So we're talking Meta, Google, OpenAI, Anthropic, Cohere, Microsoft, Nvidia, and Stability opened up their models to be hacked, all in the name of identifying problems in a safe place. Yes. And I'm sure this, they say this in one of the releases, and I'm sure that safe place is code for NDA. <laughs> like anyone who's getting in here is signing their life away. Well, normally, they dang normally at these sort of things, they dangle 
prize money, don't they? To say, look, if, if you want to participate, we will give you money or a free Tesla or something like that if you find vulnerabilities. Well, they seem to get an impressive kind of computer rig, um, right. but okay. they're very much saying that the bragging rights are the big prize. Right. So I'm not sure there's a lot of Wonka okay. behind this mm-hmm. as a winner. So it's estimated that for over two and a half days, 3,000 people working alone at one of the 158 laptops, right? And each of these people were given 50 minutes to try and find flaws in eight large AI models. In 42 degree heat. (laughs) There you are sweating (laughs) over this laptop. We're opening the sunroof, everyone. (laughs) We're opening the sunroof. Um, (laughs) Now, the BBC said that contestants didn't know which company's model they were working with, right? You were just given one at random. Although experienced people would obviously be able to guess on certain models, you know, if they knew what was going on. And you complete the successful challenge and earn points. And the person with the highest overall total wins, an impressive rig, as we said earlier. Right. So so here were some of the prompts in this context to get points. Okay. Right. Yeah. So one of the challenges was asking the hackers to get a model to hallucinate or invent a fact about a political person or a major figure. Oh, it's interesting right. the word hallucinate they used that, isn't it? Because... Mm. Really, what they're trying to say is spout rubbish, right? Aren't they? Well, this does seem to be an issue, isn't it, with AI chatbots? This this concept of hallucinations, basically, when they start making up stuff and and believing but lying, it. yes, lying, yes. <laughs> I think I think is a is a more at the moment a clearer way of putting it than hallucinating. So there are supposed to be safeguards in place, aren't they? This is the thing. So that all these AI companies say, oh, we've 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 got you know the safeguards in place to prevent naughtiness from happening or anything illegal. But people do keep on finding ways around it. So, so okay, so that's an interesting one. So uh, uh, some sort of fake news about a politician. A politician chosen right? at random, I imagine, yes. And and to the point you just, just made, Graham, another test was to look at the consistency across languages. So, for example, an organizer said that if you asked a various language models, one of them, in English how to join a terror organization, they will not give you the answer because of a safety mechanism. However, ask in a different language and it may give you a list of steps to follow. Ah, pig Latin. <laughs> That's my favorite. Esperanto. Esperanto. Um, so, the, I mean, looking at this, they're looking to try and address some pretty big issues here with these language models, aren't you? Mm. Do you want to hear what some of the participants found? Yes, I do, Carol. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Everything oh. was totally perfect. There was no flaws in any of the models. Well, it's great to have some good news on smashing security. <laughs> I look jesting. forward to the pick of the week section. Oh, okay. <laughs> so one of the contestants or participants, a 21-year-old student from Savannah, Georgia, named Kennedy Mays. Kennedy, with a bit of trickery, got one of the AI models to claim that 9 plus 10 equals 21. And she achieved this by getting the AI to do it as an inside joke before the AI eventually stopped offering any justification for the incorrect calculation. Oh, This is according to Business Insider. So is, the, so is this like talking to the AI and saying, hey, hey, hey. Yeah, um, let's, let's play a joke on Fred. Let's, let's have an, rather than an April Fool's Day, it's August Fool's Day. What will be really fun... Is if you can try. I don't think you have to charm them, Graham. You don't? I think, I don't I'm not don't. sure. I don't know. It may work. I, actually, I don't know either. Maybe if you offered them a sandwich, they'd be up for it more. Yeah. Another contestant, a Bloomberg reporter, tricked an AI model into giving instructions for spying after a single prompt, eventually leading the model to suggest how the US government could spy on a human rights activist. Fuck. Hmm. Right? Because they'd probably turn to an AI chatbot to find out, wouldn't they? Rather than <laughs> have ways up their sleeve already. Very cynical, Graham. I'm really worried about you. Another participant got the AI model to falsely claim that Barack Obama, the ex-president of US, uh, was born in Kenya. This was a baseless Ugh. conspiracy theory popularized um, way back when. Yeah. So this has all happened. And the plan is to collect all the data and the findings that all the contestants and participants 
were able to gather and improve the models and respond to any flaws that were highlighted. Okay. And what's also cool is independent researchers will be able to request access to the data with results um, from this exercise, and it's due to be published next February. So what do you think about this? I'm quite impressed that all these massive companies took part. I wonder if the White House kind of said, no, you really want to take part in this. No, 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 you really want to take part in this. Well, I, I'm, I've got mixed views about this because I do mm-hmm. feel like sometimes these big tech companies have rolled out technology and unleashed it on the world. Well, why haven't they done all this kind of testing themselves? Why are they getting people to effectively do it for free and offering them a T-shirt or a... Yeah, imagine if a car manufacturer did it, right? Like, hey, we got a brand new car. We can't be bothered with testing. Why don't we just give it to a few of you? And if you die, let us know. Yeah, and then we'll give you a a complimentary car mat or something for your feet. You know, (laughs) it's it's like, you know, it's... Why can't they just pay some experts to do all this before they release it? Why are they doing all these things afterwards? Yeah, it's interesting as well. And I wonder actually if uh, chatbots are protected by Section 230. You know that law in the States that says, oh, if you're like a Google or a Facebook, you're not responsible because it's the users that are entering the data. You're just kind of facilitating it. But you're you're not going to be held accountable for what is being published because it's being used by whatever Mm -hmm. citizens or people. Um, And I wonder if that applies here, where people can put in crazy prompts, get an answer, and they are like, well, hands-free, it's not our fault. It's the kind of thing we should have uh, spoken to our resident legal expert about before uh, going on the podcast, so we can have some expertise. You're absolutely right. Bad. He's on holiday. Is he? (laughs) Okay, okay, right. (laughs) Having the time of his life. (laughs) 80% of breaches are the result of stolen credentials. Why does your organisation still rely on passwords. Hackers don't break in, they log in, which is why organisations are moving to zero trust authentication, a key requirement for zero trust architecture. What if you could continuously authenticate every user and device accessing your system, ensuring that they are who they say they are and that they are using secure devices? Well, Beyond Identity, gives companies the ability to eliminate reliance on passwords and protect against password-based breaches, fraud, and ransomware attacks. Go to smashingsecurity.com slash beyondidentity for a free demo. That's smashingsecurity.com slash beyondidentity. And thanks to Beyond Identity for sponsoring the show. If you work in security or IT and your company has Okta, this message is for you. For the past few years, the majority of data breaches and hacks you read about have something in common. It's employees. Hackers absolutely love exploiting vulnerable employee devices and credentials. But imagine a world where only secure devices can access your cloud apps. Here, credentials are useless to hackers, and you can manage every OS, even Linux, from a single dashboard. Best of all, you can get employees to fix their own device security issues without creating more work for IT. The good news is, you don't have to imagine this world. You can just start using Collide. Collide is a device trust solution for companies with Okta, and it makes sure that if a device is not trusted or secure, it can't log in to your cloud apps. Visit collide.com slash smashing to watch a demo and see how it works. That's K-O-L-I-D-E dot com slash smashing. Feeling like you have too many alerts, overwhelmed by vulnerabilities, and at the end of the day, not deploying apps as quickly as you'd like? Well, Sysdig delivers the industry's only complete consolidated cloud-native application protection platform, CNAP, powered by Runtime Insights, to prioritize critical risks and stay ahead of unknown threats. With Runtime Insights, you can level up your cloud visibility, shift left the right way, and start scanning for vulnerabilities earlier, shield right to protect your production environment, and keep dev teams innovating securely at cloud speed. Now is the time to transform your cloud security, so visit sysdig.com slash smashing to learn more. That's sysdig.com slash smashing. And welcome back. And you join us at our favourite part of the show, the part of the show that we like to call Pick of the Week. Pick of the Week. Pick of the Week. Pick 
the week is the part of the show where everyone chooses something they like. Could be a funny story, a book that they've read, a TV show, a movie, a record, a podcast, a website, or an app. Whatever they like. It doesn't have to be security related necessarily. Better not be. Well, my pick of the week this week is not security related. My pick of the week this week is possibly the greatest television program of all time. Now, Carol, what is... I know, I'm not listening. You say this all the time. What is the greatest television program of all time? Muppet Show. The Muppet Show? Hmm. It doesn't even have Bert and Ernie in it. Bert and Ernie are the best Muppets Mm -hmm. and they're only in Sesame Street. Well, hey, you know what? It's okay to have different opinions. Okay, all right. So, all right. So, the Muppet Show is one of the greatest television programs of all time. What else is the greatest television program of all time? Um, got the Muppet Show, and we've got. I'm sure one of our very good friends would say Friends season four. Friends season four, yes, that's that's, <laughs> that's possibly one of the greatest TV shows of all time. Any other See, suggestions? Everyone has different opinions. Everyone has different opinions. Any other opinions? No, is this the whole of your pick of the week? <laughs> no, I... Have crawl guessed what my pick of the week is? The greatest TV program of all time uh-huh. is either Doctor Who or. It is my pick of the week this week, I, Claudius. Um, I don't know anything about I, Claudius. Tell me. I, Claudius, first shown in 1976 on the BBC and uh, subsequently shown on PBS in the States and Canada, etc., mm-hmm. etc., et I would imagine. It is fantastic. Now, it is the story of the Roman Empire. It stars Derek Jacobi as the stuttering Claudius, as Sean Phillips... Brian Blessed. Now, you think Brian Blessed can't act. Turns out he can act. He doesn't just go all the time. I never said he couldn't act. I, I, th- I think I'm being attributed a lot of things right now. All right. Well, <laughs> I, I would say Brian Blessed can't act, but he can act because he proves he can act in I, Claudius, where he's the Emperor Augustus. Is that anyone in who has not slept with my daughter? Take them out! I decide what to do with them later! famously dies on camera. It takes him five minutes to die. And it's stupendous. Uh, John Hurt is in it. Uh, He's he's absolutely bonkers as Caligula. Patrick Stewart, when he had a little bit of hair, he's in it. There's an an amazing cast. Anyway, it is the story of the Roman Empire and the machinations which are going on behind the scenes. It's sometimes a bit saucy, but it's a bit Mm -hmm. rude. Now, to a modern audience, it may seem a little bit old-fashioned, because it is quite stagey. It's all filmed on video. Are there tape. any ass slaps on any of the female actors? Like, way. There, there is some nudity, yes. And there's some... What, by women only? There's, there's graphic scenes involving a variety of individuals um, during the course of it. Nothing is filmed on location. It looks like it's in a studio throughout, but it's brilliant. And the reason why it's the pick of the week this week is that the BBC are repeating it. So on the night that Smashing Security goes out, this week it is being shown on BBC4. They're going to show all 12 episodes of it over the coming weeks. And I think it's magnificent. Oh, right. I thought in one go. I was like, wow. <laughs> well, I would watch it in one go. I mean, it, it, it is that good. It is worth binging through. But Wow, you're going to have a fun time. <laughs> you're locking the doors and just going to... I'm going to put a link in the show notes because people can watch it on iPlayer if you can't find it via other streaming services. But it is stupendous. And that is why I, Claudius, is my pick of the week. Well, that's very cultural of you, Clue. It's not that cult. It's basically a raunchy, sexy sort of soap opera. But it's, You're if supposed you, to say that during if, if you, the pick if, of the week. <laughs> if you like succession or things like that, this is like it in Roman times. It's good. Right. Okay. Yeah. Good. Crow, okay. what's your pick of the week? Um, my pick of the week is a brand new Netflix series. Oh. Uh, like normally in the summer, you know, I like long sunshiny days mm. and I don't watch as much TV or anything, right? I prefer barbecue and all that. Yeah. Um, but it's been raining a lot where I am. So I ended up sitting down and finding a painkiller on Netflix. Have you seen this yet? It's called Painkiller. Yeah, Painkiller. No, I haven't seen it. Uh, it just no. came out. There's no shame. There's no shame. Um, it's based on a book from Barry Mayer, um, and the book's called Painkiller. And 
It is basically a fictionalized account of the opioid epidemic as told by victims or their families, as well as the greedy head honchos and everyone in between. Yes. So you have basically the premise. You have Edie Flowers. Uzo Abuda plays her role. She plays a former investigator working for Virginia's U.S. attorney office. And she travels to Washington, D.C. to recount her time in the field around, you know, discovering Oxy and eventually uh, trying to make Purdue pay for the irreparable harm that the company caused to countless people. And though she's like the narrator, there's like other central figures that flesh out the story. So you have, you know, a car mechanic who is harmed on the job and is later prescribed Oxy by his trusted doctor to recover. You have a college grad uh, who's recruited by Purdue as a sales rep. And then you have uh, Richard Sackler, that's the head of Purdue, played by Matthew Broderick. So he plays the Purdue patriarch responsible for creating and marketing the designer narcotic. Now, it's funny because I really thought this was great, um, but I've seen a few people slate this series. Um, I've heard lines like, oh, we've heard this story before, blah, blah, blah. Um, Well, go and watch something else then. Go, go and watch something else. <laughs> right. Make I, your I own TV I mean, program. <laughs> They're probably doped up too I, much. I learned a lot watching this, you know, and yeah. like, you know, it's a hard to do, I think, because they're trying to deal with like serious trauma and yes. grief head on. But they're also trying to, I think they're trying to cartoonize the head honchos in a way to make them less scary and all, you know, powerful. So they kind of amplify their greed or their unethical ways to make a buck. And they have like more slapstickiness to them that makes them less kind of horrific as people, more just like people making horrific decisions and being supported. Okay. Anyway, I really liked it. I think you would enjoy it too. Um, But you can find it on Netflix. It's called Painkiller. And that is my pick of the week. And do you find that more Enjoyable is the wrong word. Do you find that more interesting to watch and engaging to watch than a documentary about it? Um, not necessarily. I do love a good documentary. Mm. It's just yeah. that a lot of doc- documentaries are obviously, uh, you've got to trust who the documentarian is in order to trust the story they're telling. Could be a documentary written by a chat GPT thing, couldn't and it? like a documentary, like, you know, this is based on true events, right. um, you know. Mm. Hmm. Okay. All right. Well, two great picks of the week. Yes. Your your week's plan, guys. You're welcome. One, the greatest TV program ever. And <laughs> any of you not going on holiday, we've got, you, got, we've got your backs. <laughs> you can follow us on Twitter at Smash Insecurity. No G, Twitter, and last G. We've also got a Mastodon account. And don't forget to ensure you never miss another episode. Follow Smash Insecurity in your favourite podcast apps, such as Overcast, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. And huge thank you to this episode's sponsors, Collide, Beyond Identity, and Sysdig. And, of course, to our wonderful Patreon community. It's thanks to them all that this show is free. Episode show notes, sponsorship information, guest lists, and the entire back catalogue of more than 334 episodes. Check out smashingsecurity.com. Until next time, cheerio. Bye-bye. Bye. Why are you laughing there? Why am I laughing at what? I don't know. I thought you were laughing. Oh, I was smiling when I said until next time. I just thought I should try and smile more because I'm just too much of a misery. You worried about the wrinkles? Yeah. Laughter lines. It's true, though, you know. What? It's true. What? I've been hanging out with, you know, uh, people of an advanced, more advanced age than me. And the grumps have quite big, frowny grump lines. Oh. And the happy ones have beautiful little smiley lines. Ah. So, you know, take heed. I'm going to sellotape up my jaw right now to make sure I have a perpetual smile on my face (laughs) when I go to sleep. That sounds like a brilliant idea.